Hi, I'm Jeremy Walker and I'm an engineer at Google. And today I'm gonna to walk you through creating your first tile on Wear OS. So uh, before we get into the code lab itself, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Wear OS. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the differences between um, mobile development and Wear OS development, um, mainly around the surfaces. Then I'm gonna talk about what a tile is uh, and how to develop at it from a, a, a high level, and then we'll jump into the code lab. So before we get started, um, you want to make sure that you have some, well, well, you should have some knowledge of Android, uh, Kotlin, uh, and you should have Android Studio installed. And, and before you get started, you should probably start to download an emulator if you don't have one, or, or if you have your device, you'd be fine. But, um, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here uh, you just go to uh, the AVD manager, uh, if you, it's under tools uh, right here too, if you don't have it, um, and just hit create, uh, just go to Wear OS, and I always choose round, get next. And then if you don't, if you haven't already, you just hit download. So the current production version of Wear right now is 28. Uh, you probably heard about the next version, which we put in a developer preview the other day, and that's 30. You can use a, both tiles, works on both of those. So you can use either one. Um, but if you don't have it yet, you should have a download button. So just go there, it should start downloading. And then hopefully, uh, by the time I'm done with my overview, that should be downloaded for you. Okay. So let's talk about Wear OS. Um, so Wear OS is based on Android and it's optimized for the wrist. Um, you probably saw if you were watching any of the keynotes that we've made some major changer, changes and improvements to the platform. Um, including Samsung coming into the fold and bringing some of their expertise uh, to over to Wear OS. Um, I'm not going to cover all those details. Uh, I encourage you to watch the Wear developer keynote. Uh, it's about 15 minutes long and it covers all that stuff. Uh, but again, I always like to go to that Wear OS is based on Android and it's optimized for the wrist. So uh, if you did happen to watch that presentation, you probably know that all the libraries they announced are part of uh, Jetpack. Uh, and just like mobile, that allows you to follow best practices, reduce boilerplate, um, and your code will work consistently across Wear OS versions and um, devices. Uh, so that part's the same. But what I like to talk about are some of the differences between mobile uh, and Wear OS are the, the surfaces. So before we get into uh, the tiles, let's let's talk about mobile first. So if you develop a mobile app, uh, you're probably used to setting it up for certain user journeys. You have your activities, your fragments, and you do all your good stuff in there for deep experiences. But you also probably don't realize you're developing for another surface, which is the notifications. So this is for if you want to alert the user of something important when they're not in your app, or maybe they have a long running activity that you want to keep them uh, keep them involved in or let them know updates as they go through that. So basically on mobile, you're, for the most part, you're usually developing for two surfaces, the app itself and notifications. So on where it's the same thing. You have the notifications, uh, just like mobile. Uh, you also have something, what we call overlays, which is kind of the same thing as what you think of as an app. You're gonna use like an activity. It's gonna be a deeper experience, but it's a little bit different than mobile in that we only want you to have a couple uh, user uh, journeys in that, and and usually each user journey is self-contained in a in a vertical um, a, a vertical activity. There's some other best practices around that, uh, and we cover that in our guides. But uh, again, those two are pretty similar. But you also have something called complications. So the main like home screen is if you want to think of it for a watch is the watch face, and you can actually have a little bit of extra information around it. And these are called complications. Well, your app can provide those uh, the data for those complications. So, uh, for instance, if you're a weather app, you could have a complication for the weather like here, um, and that would let the user not only be able to choose and get your information there, but they can tap into that and then go into that deeper experience with the overlay or the activities. Um, but the last one, which is what we're going to talk about today, are tiles. So tiles are a single full screen experience. Um, you can see here, uh, you swipe through it from the actual watch face itself. You swipe left. You can actually swipe right as well. It's a carousel experience. 
but you can see uh, what you're getting is a full uh, screen experience. It's uh, not it's not information heavy, uh, and it usually gives one uh, action. So here's it in stills to give you a better idea. But you can see each of these are not like they're not stuffing a ton of content in there because their tiles are meant to be glanceable. Like you can look, you can get the information quick from you know you swipe over, you get the information really quickly, maybe of one action, and that's it. Uh, so you're probably like, okay, this sounds cool. Like if I, you know, my watch, I can swipe left and choose some of these cool things, but why do I want to implement them? Well, we found a majority of app launches into your deeper experience actually come from tiles over the app launcher itself. So just that in itself says, Hey, tiles are pretty important. So you see this, you say, okay, tiles are pretty cool. They're if, you know, for my app experience, it's pretty important. I include them. Um, how do I develop on them? So. Uh, how you develop with tiles is a little bit different. Um, it's actually, tiles are actually part of the system UI. So they, um, they're actually in their own application container, which means there's no access to your activities or any XML layout files. Um, instead, a service, which we'll implement here in a moment, actually describes the layout and the content. And then the system UI will render it when it's needed. So at a high view, this is what we're going to do. You uh, you basically implement your own service that, that uh, sorry, implements a tile provider service. And then there's two methods. One is the tile request method. And this is basically just for defining your layout, uh, how everything's going to look. Um, and if you don't have any graphics, that's going to be mainly it. Well, I, I should take that back. If you have any actions, you'd probably want to do those later too. But we'll just say for the, for the tile request, if you want laying everything out, you're going to want to do it there. And then if you have any graphics, then that's when you use this on resources request. And this will actually allow you to supply the draw, drawable resource to that. So again, in the request, you lay it out. And then if you have any graphics, you supply it in the resource request. All right. So let's start the code lab. Hopefully that gives you an idea. So if you go to uh, d.android.com slash codelabs where dash tiles, uh, put that in. That's kind of a mouthful. So um, you should see this. If that's hard, you can just, because it is for me, just do Google Code Labs. Put that one. Um, you can just search tiles. It should be the first one there. It's the same thing. Anyway. Um, you should see this screen, which I just showed you. And I've actually covered a lot of the beginning, the intro already. Um, so let me cover what you will learn. Uh, first, we're going to create a tile. Then we're going to test a tile on a device, in my case, an emulator. Um, I'll design a tile layout. Then I'll add an image. And then I'll add an interaction, which will be a tap. And by the end, you'll have this nice little um, tile, which is basically has some text. Um, it has a graphic. This is will be a button you can click on. And then it'll have a arc that goes around the side that represents how far you are from your um, step goal. Okay, so the setup, um, you have to have the emulator. We talked about that earlier. Hopefully you've downloaded that by now. And there is a GitHub repo. So don't worry, you don't have to memorize that if you actually are at the code lab. I've covered this intro. You guys have a good idea. You know what we're going to build. Um, if you hit next at the top here, there is the GitHub repo. So if you know um, Git, you can just clone it. That's pretty straightforward. If you don't have, if you don't know Git, don't worry. Just hit download. So I'll give you a second to do that, and then I am actually going to walk you through. Um, oh, sorry. We'll give you a second. So hopefully you download that uh, and then we'll run it. And then after you do that, I'm going to kind of talk through some of the uh, the code itself. So by the end, you should have you should have your um, your repo downloaded and open up uh, open up the project. And you should see uh, a, two modules. One is uh, finished. So if you make any mistakes and can't quite figure out why it's not working, just look at that at the end. Uh, that should cover you. 
Uh, and then we have start, which is where we're going to do a more majority of our code. Um, so you actually want to set this drop down to start. And then hopefully your emulator's there. And then if you actually run this now, you should get this time to create a tile. Okay, so let's explore the code a little bit. Um, hopefully you've had time to download this and it's, it's all set up for you. Um, so first, uh, you have your manifest, obviously. Um, there's a debug manifest there. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, you can see here we have a repository. Uh, you don't need to look at that. It's basically a fake repository that every time we call it, it returns a step count towards our goal, um, which will change every time you load it. Uh, it's just using a random number, but it, it gives you an idea and there's a delay so you can um, think of it like as if it was valid data. Uh, next is the tile service. So um, we're going to do most of our work in here. You can see this is a tile provider service like I talked about, and here's one of the methods we talked about. Um, so the debug is actually right now to, that's where this comes in is um, to actually see a tile, you have to use um, an activity. So we do that, I'll walk through that in a second. Um, we put it in debug because you don't want to ship it with your production app. Um, and which actually brings us to, if you look at the, the, the uh, dependencies, you can see here's our tile dependency. And, and again, we have a debug uh, dependency here so that you don't include this library in your production app, but you can still view your tile. Um, and then the manifest, pretty straightforward. Um, this is just list the service. Okay, so that should give you an overview of what we're gonna do and hopefully you're all set up uh, with the code lab to get started. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, you've run this, you've seen time to create a tile. Uh, we've explored the code. Uh, I've talked through most of this, so don't worry about this. In fact, for this code lab, there is quite a bit, of, there's a good amount of text on it, but um, I'm actually gonna be talking through a lot of it. So really, realistically, you don't have to read it all. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll just tell you the important bits. So uh, we're on step three, which is add a tile. So I've actually talked about all this already. Uh, we talked about the uh, on tile request, which is how you lay out your tile and the on request resource, which will give you graphics. So the first thing we're gonna do is, oh, sorry, before I jump into that, the way I set up this code lab is I basically make comments called to do's and then I put the action. So what we'll do is we'll copy it an action and we'll look for it and then we'll paste a full block of code. I'm not gonna have you paste like one line at a time, just a full block with lots of comments and then we'll talk through it. Um, I find this is much easier than I don't have to tell you to go to line whatever, you just search for it, you're right there and then you replace it. Um, so first we're gonna review the constants. Um, so in here, there should be a little area here called review constants and you just copy that. <clears throat> Again, all everything we're doing is in this goals, uh, goals tile service. So we'll start with the file. Um, again, make sure you're in start. So just do a command F. Oops. Well, here's the here it is. Um, you can see. I just wanted to point out at the beginning. I, I have a bunch of constants because you might see. Hey, later when we're pasting code, you're like, where did that come from? But these are mainly like dimensions to set up the look and stuff of um, of something where of like the button and all that stuff on um, the arc. Then we have like an ID, which I'll talk about why we need that later. And then a resource version, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, OK, so we've reviewed. Hey, there's constants. No big deal. Um, let's actually do our first step. So you copy this to do build a tile. If you search, it should take you down here. So. Uh, what we have here is uh, we're going to replace this whole section here. It's we're replacing this time to create a tile, and I'll actually walk you through it. So, copy this whole thing, copy, and then we're just going to replace this entire method. So, cover the entire method and hit B, um, and I'll walk through this. Um, so, uh, we basically are using a coroutine to return a future. Um, 
I'm, I'm not going to get into that part. Uh, the, the most important part here is the tile builder. So this is where all the, the magic happens. You, you're going to use a builder uh, first. Uh, so I talked about, you saw this constant either earlier, which was a resource version. So you have to set a resource version. And the reason is for that, um, it's basically like an ID to tie. If you do add a graphic to your layout later, then this resource version is used to match uh, later on this on resource request when it goes and tries to find the graphic that matches with it. So this is kind of like an ID to match these two together. So you always want to make sure you include that. Um, okay, so this ne next block of code is actually going to do set a timeline. So why don't I walk you through that visually first before I show you the code? Um, so every tile actually has one has a timeline. And each timeline has a timeline entry, which represents a, a time, a space and time, and then a layout associated with that. Um, for ours, uh, we're doing a hello world right now, but then as we add build on this tile, we actually want to, uh, we're actually gonna just have one timeline entry. But if you can think if you had like a calendar app, then you'd have a couple timeline entries, right? You'd have one for some future meeting, like two hours in the future, and maybe another one for a meeting an hour in the future, and each of those would have different layouts. And um, when the system needed the right one, it would it would populate it and render it to the user. So uh, the most important thing to remember here is like every tile has a timeline, and you just have to put at least one timeline entry. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm setting a timeline. I'm using the timeline builder to add a timeline entry. We only have one, so I'm using a builder for that. And then I'm setting the layout. Uh, I'm using the layout builder to set a root. And then I'm just adding a text with a text builder that just says, hello world, that's it. And then I'm calling build. So uh, if I actually run that, I should get a hello world. There we go. All right, so we've done a hello world. That's pretty simple. Um, Oh, I, I actually before I before I jump in and start actually building out a more advanced tile, I do want to cover that um, the preview activity. So there's something called a tile client. This is just basically how you preview the tile. Uh, I'm not having you actually um, paste any code in here. You can see I have a step later on, but I just want you to just wanted to show you how it's being rendered so you know. So if you're curious how we're you're previewing the tile, it's with this. Um, this activity here. All right, so we've got through this whole step three. Uh, you should have a hello world now. We just basically did one copy and paste replacement. Um, and now we'll start adding a little bit more stuff. So we have the hello world. Now we're gonna add a box uh, and arc. So um, by the way, uh, FYI, if you're running this on a square, it'll look like this. If you're running on a circle, it'll look like this. Uh, okay, so now we go back to build a tile. You're gonna search for the same thing. Uh, you can just copy and paste that. It's actually just right here, uh, but you do need to copy all this code here. So go ahead and copy that. And then you wanna replace the entire thing. So V. All right, so I'll walk you through this. Um, I'll make this a little bit bigger. So again, everything, uh, well, it, let me cover the parts that are different first. So in the beginning, you can see I'm calling my repository and I'm getting the goal progress. Um, I'm getting this thing here that you're probably called device parameters, which you're probably like, well, what is this for? Well, this later when we're actually gonna render some text, we can actually set the styles from the, um, the system and pull those from that. And we're gonna use that to do that. Um, so we'll use that later for text, basically to style it. Um, and then obviously this is our goal. So the first thing you see is, hey, I have a tile builder, uh, same set of resource. Okay, we did that before we set a timeline. That's the same time. Okay, you're like, well, what's different? Well, really this is only different. And you should have an error here. Uh, and that's because um, this, function is not defined yet. So we're following a best practice. We don't want to have tons and tons of nested code. So wherever we can, we're breaking out little units 
to their own method, um, which is just a best practice. So let's go ahead and define that uh, method. And we're using that again to create a box in an arc. And I'll talk to you what a box means in a second. So uh, first you search for this thing, which should take you right here, create a root box layout and content. Copy this, and then right below it, you just paste it. Or if you want to, you can just highlight the to-do and paste. And again, the to-do will still appear because you copied that as part of it. Okay, so what am I doing here? Um, I'm creating a layout. This is this layout. I'm, I'm passing in these two parameters. Uh, I'm, I'm actually creating a box with a box builder. So what is a box? Um, we talk about it a little down here, but they're basically tiles have a bunch of layout containers and the box is one of them. And um, what it does specifically is children are laid out one over the other inside the box. So you can add a bunch of content. So this is just basically a container where I can stack things on top of each other. Um, so I, I basically set the box, I use the builder. You're going to see a lot of builders throughout this. I set the width and the height to the full, uh, the full screen. Um, next I add an arc. So you're going to see this add content a lot. So once you, um, define like a layout, whenever you want to actually add something, you're going to call add content. So here I'm calling something, which is an error, uh, and I'm passing in the goal. So you probably guess like, Hey, we're following best practice. We don't want tons of nested code. So I'm going to define another method, which actually defines this arc. Um, next I add content again, so I must be adding something else. Uh, and in this case, I'm just adding some text called replace me. And we're going to do this, replace this part later. So, um, so, so far we've basically done a, uh, tile container. We've set a non-existent arc <laughs> and then we are setting some text. So let's define that arc. Um, so we're actually going to, so an arc is actually a container option as well. Uh, and we want to use an arc line. So we want a little nice little curved line that goes around the edge. So uh, the first thing you do is you search for this to do. In copy paste. Um, if you're really eagle eyed, you can see that it's just down here. Uh, but there it is. I always like to just search anyway to make sure you don't miss it. Uh, so I copy this and then I'm just going to paste this here. So again, this is just a method. Um, I'm calling arc builder. Uh, and then you can see here, add content, which is just like this, add content. So I'm adding content here and I'm actually, this is uh, what I'm building an arc line. So this is going to be the line that goes around the, the, uh, the outside of the tile. So um, I'm setting a length. Uh, I'm using a helper to do that. Uh, it could be 360 degrees around the whole thing. Uh, we don't want the whole thing. We only want a percentage of it. So I'm doing a percentage, uh, which is based on my step goal. I'm setting a color, uh, I'm setting thickness, uh, and then I'm setting an anchor angle and type. And this is just a way to specify where the arc start, uh, starts, um, and how it goes around. Uh, so that's it. So that's all the steps. So in review, we basically, we pulled in some extra information here. Everything else was the same. And then we defined a layout. Um, in that layout, we actually had a container that was the box. And then we put a an arc in there, which it contained an arc with an arc line. And then we put some text. So if you run this now, you should get this, which should say replace me. Um, and you can see a nice little arc around here. And actually, uh, because the repository returns different values every time you could actually run it again if you want to and you'll see that okay now it appears down here so it'll change depending on what's coming in um, but you can see uh, we need to get rid of this replacement and make it much better okay so we should be step through step five uh, you should have this replace me um, we've covered the whole add a box and arc so let's go to the next step all right, so now we're going to add some custom text and an image. Uh, so first go to this to do, add a column, again, copy it, go here, search it. 
Okay, so um, we want to replace this replace me text uh, with our new text. So what I'm going to do is copy this whole thing here. And then you don't want to overwrite the build, just this thing that goes end replace to start replace. Uh, so V here. And don't worry if you forget to, you might have to do's twice, but that's okay. That's just a comment, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so I'm again, what you're used to, add content, add content. So this is, column is just another uh, tile container. And as you probably guess, uh, a column, it'll put them in a column, it, you know, on top of each other going down. Whereas a, ba a box is more like a frame layout where it just, you know, you can kind of put everything everywhere, but it'll be on top of each other. A column will put them in order uh, going vertically. And there's also a row one, so if you want to go horizontally. Anyway, so that's just another uh, tile container. So we're setting a column because we want to put text in, in order. So the first thing we do is add content. Um, okay, another error, add content, another error. And you probably are guessing, oh, these, these, uh, met these functions aren't defined yet because we don't want to have everything in one function and tons and tons of, um, you know, it just going deeper and deeper nested stuff. So again, best practices here. So you should be not step seven. We're going to actually define these text elements. So uh, look for this copy here. All right, same thing. Search here, create functions that construct stylized text representations. That's what we want. So you're going to copy this whole thing and just paste that here. So what we're doing here <clears throat> is we're defining two functions, one for current steps. You can see we take in the a string and the device parameters. If you remember earlier at the very beginning, I said, hey, I'm getting these device parameters. What am I using for? Well, now I'm using them to get uh, font styles. So first I set the text, um, I set a certain style, and then I call build. And then there's another uh, function that gets the total steps, and I'm using a bit of a different font style to, to make it look a little bit different. Okay, so that replaces that. Okay, so we should be done with that step. So if you just hit start over. Uh, yeah, so you can see, because this is a column, these are stacked on, uh, or these are uh, following each other vertically. First, we have the, the steps and then the goal. Okay, so we're feeling pretty good. We've, we've got our uh, box and the art, then we did two custom text. Now we're gonna actually add uh, an image. Okay, so, um, so the next thing you wanna do is just copy this and just search for it. So this should take you right here, which is a do later. Um, so if you scroll up, we're, st we're still in the main layout function. The box builder's at the top. We're setting an arc. We have our column builder where we defined first our text, which was our steps, and then our goal. Okay, so now we're going to add a spacer and the image. So copy this and paste that here. And I just replace the to do later and this to do. Make sure you don't replace this nice little uh, parent here. All right, so what do we do? We add a spacer, which a spacer is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just adding a little space between the text and the image. And then we add content. You're used to this add content everywhere. Add content uh, and start run button. And as we talked about, like we don't want tons of nested code, so we're following best practice. So we have to define this method, which will add an image. So let's look where we want to put that. Again, copy this. All right, so it goes right there. So just copy all this stuff. And just paste it right there. All right, so let's walk through this. This start run button. Um, all right, so image, image builder, used to builder, so this makes sense. Uh, we're gonna set a width and a height. Again, these are the constants I talked about earlier. Okay, so this one is actually important. I'm setting a resource ID. So, um, so even though um, 
uh, well, why don't I call them cover the modifiers and I'll get back to that. Uh, so the modifiers are, I'm just adding padding, uh, and then I'm adding some stuff for the corners. Um, but you can see, like, I'm not actually adding an image here. Uh, again, like I talked about way in the beginning, there's one method that lets you do the layout. Then there's another method that will return graphics, uh, if they're needed. So what I'm doing here is while I am defining the size of the image, uh, uh, or the graphic, I need to set a resource ID. And the reason I need to set that is, uh, so later when the other method's called, A, it knows to match which, uh, which tile with which set of resources. And then this matches whatever uh, the particular set of resource in here. So just remember this ID and then we'll come back to it in a second. If I actually ran this now, um, you would see that even though I've defined the background and the and the size, there's no there's no graphic here, right? Um, that's because it has to come from that other method. Uh, okay, so we're feeling pretty good, but hey, we need to now map the resource because uh, it'd be nice to have a graphic. So if you scroll down to step ten, we're going to do that now. So copy this. Do a control F. Okay, so now this takes you right here to the on resource request. And if we look again at a high level, like I said, when you're impl implementing the tile provider service, uh, you're going to have two methods on tile request, which I've said a million times is for defining the layout. If you remember, I said a resource version, um, and that's so I can match it later. So that's what I'm going to do here. You can see here I'm matching a resource version uh, so that it knows like, hey, when this hits, like, this is the one I want that matches to this layout. But you see, like, I'm not defining an image or anything there. I'm just, I'm doing nothing. So that's where this code comes in. So copy that. And then you're just going to replace this entire uh, method. Okay, so let's cover what this is. So resources builder, uh, pretty familiar, the builder pattern here. Uh, I set the version and that's a resource version. Now I do the add ID to image mapping. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do, um, to return a resource. Uh, I always do the drawable resource. That's the easiest one. So that's what I'm gonna cover. Um, and so how you do that is you call this image resource builder. You say set um, Android resource by the ID. Uh, and in the end, you get the drawable resource this way, which is what you're used to, right? But you're, but again, I'm matching this to the image ID image start, which was the ID I gave that image in my layout. So now I've mapped it. So now, well, one method defines the the layout, the other one has the resource, and now they're they're linked through those IDs. So if I hit run. Okay, I should have a nice little graphic there of a person running uh, <clears throat> for your steps. I guess I should have a walking person, not a running person. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so, all right. So now we've gotten through this. We've gotten through step six. We have one more step, uh, which is add the click listener, and then the rest is review. So uh, let's add a click listener. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is copy this and then uh, search for it. All right, so this is a click listener. Uh, so I'm actually defining this in my image itself. You can add a click listener here. So just copy this code. And again, don't replace this or the build, just the start to end. Place that. Um, so this is pretty set, straightforward. I'm setting a, a clickable, um, I'm using clickable builder, uh, and then I'm setting an ID, and then I'm setting an action. Um, so there's actually two actions you can set. You can set a, a load action, which is basically just triggers or forces a refresh of the tile through um, <clears throat> the on tile request being called. Now I'm simplifying this code lab a little bit. Um, you probably, there's another one called uh, load activity or called launch action, excuse me. That's probably the one you want to use 
more often, right? Because you want to launch into an activity, into your overlay experience where you have an activity, it's deeper. That, that If you're from mobile, it's equivalent of launching into the app, right? That's probably what you want to do. So um, while mine is just loading in this code lab, just because I'm going to basically call, have it call itself to refresh itself. And because my uh, mock database just returns a new random number, then the step count will change so we can see different numbers, you're probably going to want to do a launch action there. Um, anyway, uh, just I wanted to point out that there's those two actions. And then this ID, you're probably like, well, why do you need an ID for clicking? Uh, and that's a good question. So um, I we've covered all this, blah, blah, blah. OK, this is why. Excuse me. So uh, I have an ID here. So let's say I had. I don't know, let's pretend I, if I had two buttons, if I had two buttons here, I could do a different ID for each, each button. And then when the on request is called, I can check which one was, what the ID was, uh, and I can do different things. Uh, in my case, I just have one click, so I'm not doing anything other than just refreshing the data. So um, I wanted to make sure I showed this to you guys so you can see, but uh, I'm not doing anything with this ID, but I said it there anyway. Um, so anyway, if you run this now, now again, I click this and it's going to, it's a load action. So it's going to force a refresh. So now you can see, I get a new set of data from my mock database. And each time you click it, you should get, you know, different numbers. So we can see it's working and it's refreshing and reloading. All right, cool. So you guys have made a tile. Should feel good. Um, Oh, a quick review. You can copy and search for this. I'll just show you in the manifest. Um, just like any service, I mean, you're obviously going to have to define it in the manifest. You do it here. Um, you can see it's pretty similar, although there's a little bit of difference. You have to uh, set a permission and some other specific things for the um, for the for the tile. So we have the bind tile provider. Uh, and then we also have this so you can provide a preview um, to the phone. So when they choose, so if a user wants to choose your tile, they can see a preview of it before they before they click it. All right, congrats. So you finished making your first tile. Um, we have a bunch of other code labs. I would encourage you to check out the ongoing activity API code lab that shows uh, one of the newest features in the latest version of Wear OS. And then we have a bunch of new guides. Um, we've revamped the entire site, so I encourage you to check it out at uh, d.android.com slash where, and happy coding, and thanks for spending time with me to learn about Wear OS. Have a good day or night. Bye.